At the student level, we've begun talking about expanding our self-awareness. Now, I want you to turn your self-awareness to your own body, to become aware of your own health. Now, the first thing to understand about your body is that you have over 40 trillion cells. Now, that's a lot, right? Just to count to 40 trillion would take over a million years, just to count all your cells. Now, of course, that's not an infinite number, but for all practical purposes, we are actually infinite. Now, to get an idea of just how many cells you have, think about this. You know how the in your bones, there's marrow in your bones, they produce red blood cells? Every 24 hours, the marrow in your bones is producing over 250 million red blood cells every single day. Now, I know scientists don't like the word infinite, but you are an infinitely complex being and your body actually has its own infinite intelligence. It's a miraculously complex creation and your body will do anything that you train it to do. So I want you to expand your self-awareness so that in a few days or a few weeks, a few months, you're going to begin to sense and experience your own health, become aware of your own health in a way that you've never really done before. And the most amazing thing about your body is this. It has only one purpose, which is to keep itself healthy. No matter what you do to your body, no matter how long you ignore it or neglect it, it is always striving to be 100% healthy. Think about that. Its only job is to maintain its own health and it has its own intelligence. It actually knows how to keep itself healthy and it will never stop trying to make you healthy until your very last breath. Health is the centerpiece of the cycle of mind system. When I explained it to you, I told you that when you look at your thought matrix and you see the word health, if you only have to think about one thing related to health, think about, remember what it was? Expanding your lung capacity. See, by intentionally reminding mind, reminding yourself to create a new habit of breath awareness, you can create your own personal experience of abundance. Let me show you why deep breathing, why expanding lung capacity is so central to your health and so central to your own abundance. So as I said, your body has over 40 trillion cells. 8 trillion of these cells are called tissue cells or body cells or functional cells. These, for example, might be skin cells, muscle cells, liver, brain cells. All these cells in the body, there's 8 trillion of them. And your body has over 32 trillion red blood cells. Notice a 4 to 1 ratio. And one of the things I want to point out is anytime you look at nature, anytime you look at natural design, you will always find that nature is designed with an overabundance. There's always more abundance in nature than is necessary. The, I have an oak tree outside my, outside my front window has over 300,000 leaves. That's a lot of leaves for one tree. And there's hundreds of oak trees. That's a lot. Nature is overly abundant. It's very important to understand that. That's why health is so important, right? Why did I make health the centerpiece of the cycle of mind system? It's because of this one fact. Okay. If you can learn to become aware and experience and appreciate your own abundance, the abundance of your own body, not just your physical body, but your energetic body, your emotional body, your spiritual, when you start to understand the abundance of your own design, the perfection of your own design, you can then begin to appreciate and notice the abundance that's all around you, okay? We live in an abundant universe, but we don't appreciate it. The one thing we can and should appreciate is the abundance of our own health. See, health, good health, optimum health, vibrant health is the seed, the kernel, the beginning of an abundant mindset. If you understand the abundance of your own health, your mindset can, can see abundance in everything and everything in the world is designed in an overly abundant way. And in your, by observing your own health, that's how you're going to learn to see it. Okay. So I said you have over 40 trillion cells in your body. What do, what do these tissue cells do? Well, they're all a little bit different, right? Some are skin cells, muscle cells, brain, liver, kidneys, eyeball cells, all, every cell, 8 trillion of them. But they're all basically designed the same way. They have a nucleus. They have some other parts in there that you learned about in biology. They have a cell wall. Okay. And you also understand this concept of osmosis, how chemicals go back and forth from the cell inside the cell, through the cell wall, and into the bloodstream, and from the bloodstream into the cell, okay? What does a cell do? All a cell does, no matter what kind of cell it is, all that cells do is they create energy. That's all they do. 
they create energy. And how do they create energy? They take raw materials from the outside world and they use those raw materials to create energy. So for example, that meal that you ate four, five, six hours ago has been digested and processed and the very essential nutrients are flowing in your bloodstream. And as these nutrients flow in the plasma in your bloodstream, through osmosis, the cell draws in the nutrients that it needs. Well, also as the cell is creating energy, it's also creating waste. It's very important to understand. And it creates two kinds of waste. One is a chemical waste. This waste, these waste products through osmosis go through the cell wall and get put back into the blood. So while the cell is drawing nutrition from the blood, it is also depositing waste materials in the blood. So now this blood becomes poisonous. It becomes like it has a lot of waste material. So the way our bodies are designed is all of this blood collects and finds its way through to the kidneys. The kidneys are like the giant filter of the body. They All the blood goes through the kidneys and the kidneys filter out all the waste and then you drink water and you urinate and that's how you eliminate waste throughout the day. This is how our body works, right? Every cell takes in raw materials, it creates energy, then creates and eliminates waste products. The chemical waste, as I just said, passes into the bloodstream, but every cell also creates another type of waste, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is poison to the cell. With each passing moment, more carbon dioxide builds up in the cell and it cannot live with carbon dioxide. It has to be removed from the cell. So the cell has carbon dioxide it needs to get rid of and it's waiting for a red blood cell to arrive. Okay, so I'm gonna be a, a, a tissue cell, right? So I've got, I'm building energy, building energy, but I'm also building up carbon dioxide, right? And so I need to get rid of my carbon dioxide. So I look up the bloodstream and I'm waiting for a red blood cell to show up. I'm saying, come on, dude, I need you. I need to get rid of this carbon dioxide. I look at my watch, how long has it been since? And I see all these red blood cells, but they're going to other cells. Well, finally, a red blood cell shows up and it stops right in front of me, okay? This red blood cell is my lifesaver because the first thing I do is I exhale my carbon dioxide into the red blood cell and I pull in the oxygen that the red blood cell is carrying. And the red blood cell also carries oxygen, but it also carries vital life force. Vital life force, you've also heard it referred to as prana, as chi in Chinese medicine. It is the energy that surrounds us. It's the energy in the air. So every time we breathe in air, we're breathing in oxygen and we're also breathing in, I call it vital life force. And when the red blood cell arrives, I suck in the oxygen and I suck in the vital life force and I give it all my dose of carbon dioxide. And then, as a happy cell now, I go about and create my energy. I do my thing. I'm a brain cell, I'm a good brain cell, or a liver cell, or a skin cell. Whatever it is, I'm healthy now, and I can do my energy creation, okay? Now, the red blood cell now has a load of carbon dioxide. It's still poison. The red blood cell cannot survive with this carbon dioxide. So what the red blood cell will do is it makes all these red blood cells, and if you look at them in a microscope, you will see once the red blood cell has carbon dioxide, it flattens out and it becomes lifeless. And the red blood cells, now when the blood comes to the, to the cells, from the heart to the cells, the heart beats and the blood rushes to all the cells. But on the way back through the veins, the cells travel very, very slowly through the body, okay? They're kind of like dead and they're like a death camp. And they're, they're looking at the other cells. Are you dead? I go, yeah, I got carbon dioxide, man. I'm not doing well. I need to get rid of this carbon dioxide. Well, slowly, 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 the red, the red blood cells that contain carbon dioxide, they gather in the veins. And eventually there is, I believe it's called a superior vena cava, which takes the blood, the red blood cells, the depleted red blood cells from the top of your body, everything above your heart, that goes to the superior vena cava which is on the right side of your heart. And there's an, I believe an inferior vena cava, I think I got it right, where all the blood works its way back up through the bottom of your body and those combine into the vena cava, they go into the right atrium, which is the top of your heart, and all these blood cells are dying. They're looking at each other, man, I'm dying, I got carbon dioxide, I don't know what to do. And they go into the right atrium, a valve opens, they drop down into the right ventricle, and the right ventricle, boom, 
It pumps all of this carbon dioxide filled blood. It pumps it to the lungs. The blood rushes to the lungs and surrounds the lungs and goes in every little cavity in the lungs. And what these cells are doing is they're looking for an empty air sac. It's called an alveoli. They're looking for an empty air sac or for an air sac that they can lock onto and they find an air sac. And this is truly amazing. If you see it in a microscope, you'll see dead, flat, concave, lifeless cells. They get next to the air sac and it's like a filling station. They breathe out the carbon dioxide and they suck in the oxygen and the life force that's in the air sac. And now you'll see the cell is big and fat and bouncing and vibrant and full of life. So the blood cells now filled with oxygen and vital life force, they're dancing and they're vibrating, they're fat and they're happy. They make their way back to the heart and they make their way back to the top of the right heart, the, uh, the, the left atrium, and then a valve opens, they go to the left ventricle, and boom, the heart pumps, and all of this blood filled with oxygen and life force travels to every cell in the body. Now, my cell, who I was happy because I got the oxygen and the life force, but now I'm creating more waste. I need to get rid of my carbon dioxide. I wait for the next blood cell to come. I exhale my carbon dioxide. <sighs> and I breathe in the oxygen and the vital life force, and that allows me to continue to do my thing and, and build energy and be a functional cell. Literally, this cycle of blood that cycles through, blood is a river of life, and it cycles through our bodies over and over and over again, and each cell goes through its own cycle. It creates energy, it creates waste, it disposes of the waste, it sucks in the oxygen and the vital life force, creates energy, and this is essentially the cycle of life. This is the cycle of your cells. This is what they're doing all the time. Now, what I want you to understand is, how does this relate to breathing, okay? When you breathe, let's say I'm just talking to you now or typing on a computer or watching TV or whatever it is I'm doing. I'm not breathing deeply. Well, what happens is when my heart beats, all of the depleted blood goes to my lungs, and when it gets to my lungs, I have millions and millions of air sacs, hundreds of millions of air sacs that I'm not filling up. So when the blood who, who gets to gets rid of its carbon dioxide, it goes to an air sac that's not even, it just has the tiniest little amount of oxygen and life force. Well, it gives out its carbon dioxide and it goes, it wishes it had more, right? It doesn't have enough oxygen and vital life force, but it takes whatever it can get. And then it travels back to the heart, it gets pumped out to the cell. So now I'm a cell and I'm waiting for a red blood cell and finally a red blood cell, I gotta get rid of my carbon dioxide. I dump my carbon dioxide into the cell, but when I breathe in, I go, man, I mean, I'll take it. I'm happy to have even any life, any oxygen, any life force. I'm very happy to have it, but it's not enough. And so when I turn around and I tell my friends, hey, we got oxygen and life force, but we only got a little bit. So what do you think happens? Over time, your cells learn to operate at a lower and lower and lower level. You are living your life at a low level of health. This is where we come back to the message of lack and limitation. When you breathe or don't focus on your breathing, you're literally creating a, 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 a scenario of limitation and lack in your body. When you breathe deeply, and you expand your lungs, your blood is so happy because there's so much oxygen and so much life force and that brings it to all the cells in the body. So as a student, I want you to think about this word, become breath aware, become aware of your breathing, become aware of how much oxygen, how much life force you're pulling in from the air around you. Because the more you pull in, the better your cells can operate the more efficiently they can operate. When they diminish, they become susceptible to disease. They just operate at a low level. It's just nothing good about that. Even if you only breathe deeply in the morning exercise and the evening exercise, you're still better off than not breathing deeply at all. But try to become breath aware throughout the day. Now in the next video, I'm going to teach you a deep breathing technique. And this deep breathing technique allows you to consciously, intentionally provide your own body with a sense of abundance.
right? The more you breathe, the more abundant your health is. And this breathing is so important because if you understand that there's abundance all around us, there's we live in an ocean of oxygen, an ocean of prana, an ocean of chi, an ocean of life force. All we have to do is breathe it in. Take it into your lungs and let it be passed to every cell in your body. You can create just by breathing. You can create an awareness of your own abundance. Health is the seed, the kernel of an abundant mindset. Abundant health, abundant health at the cellular level is the kernel of an abundant mindset. Once you can create your own abundant health, and that is completely within your control, because you can breathe as often as you want. Once you create abundant health, you then begin to recognize that you already live in an abundant universe. And you begin to understand that there's abundance and plenty all around you. You just need to breathe it in. You just need to be aware of your abundance. So the Buddha said it best, right? As always, he said, maintaining the body in good health is an obligation because it allows the mind and the spirit to achieve their full potential. 